Nikon sure keeps rolling them out, don't they? I was waiting for the Nikon D5400. I told my friends, I blogged about it, and I even made several videos about the D5400. But Nikon decided to totally skip it, and that sucks. Recently, Nikon introduced the D5500, whose predecessor was the D5300. Meanwhile, I'm still waiting for the D5400. Compared to the D5300, the D5500 has an improved grip, a lighter and smaller body with built-in Wi-Fi, a faster processor, and a touch screen. Competitors include the Pentax K62, the Fujifilm X-T1, the Olympus EM10, the Panasonic DMC G6, and Canon's Rebel T6i. Nikon didn't allow a low-pass filter with the D5500's 24 megapixel sensor. Sharp focus is easy with the 39-point autofocus system. For 3D subject tracking, the D5500 uses a 2016-pixel RGB metering sensor. The ISO range is 100 to 25,600. Shooting sports is a snap at five frames per second. The D5500's maximum shutter speed is four thousandths of a second. The 3.2 inch display is fully articulating. For video, this camera tops out at 1080 at 60p. Unfortunately, you need to find an alternative to geotagging your creations. Unlike the D5300, the built-in GPS is gone. Nikon added 35% more battery capacity somehow using the same battery as a D5300. The Nikon D5500 costs $799 for just the body. If you want to include an 18 to 55 millimeter lens, you're looking at $1,100. So, what do you think about Nikon's D5500? Would you call it a great enthusiast camera? Or would you consider it an entry-level pro toy? Can you live without the built-in GPS? Let us know down below in the comment section. While you're at it, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Until next time, get out there and shoot something.